This problem is just like the last one, except the charge distribution is along the positive y-axis and our point of interest is on the x-axis. What that does is it takes away the symmetry we had in the last problem and makes this one a little more interesting to solve. I'm going to draw a picture. So here's my arbitrarily chosen dq, just some element of charge on my charge distribution I pick at random, something that's not, uh, doesn't have any particular symmetry to the problem. This problem doesn't have symmetry anyway, but uh, a randomly chosen piece of the charge on the charge distribution, and that's positive charge, so it's creating an electric field in this direction at our point of interest. And this dimension on the other side is y. So our dq is y located a distance y from the origin. Our point of interest is located a distance x from the origin. And what we need to do is add up all the components, all the uh, contributions to the electric field from our different dqs. Unfortunately, each one points in a slightly different direction. This is a vector quantity. We can't add up vectors that don't point in the same direction. So what do we do? We resolve them into components, an x component, and a y component, and then we can add up the x components and the y components. So I have a DE sub X is going to be DE times, I'm going to put a theta over here, times cosine theta. And so my E sub X is going to be the integral of this. And DE is K DQ over R squared. So at first glance, this looks a little complicated. You've got a dq in here. We don't know how to integrate over charge, right? We know how to integrate over dimension, over space, over volume, but not over charge. We've got a theta which is changing. We've got an r which is changing. Oh, by the way, what r is this? You should get in the habit of thinking about what that stands for. This is the distance between dq and our point of interest where we're looking for the electric field. So that's the hypotenuse of our right triangle. Okay, so let's see if we can make some substitutions and get this into an integral over a single variable that we can, we can solve. So let's start with dq. dq is our charge density times some length element. And in this case, we're just on the y-axis. And since this is a nice uniform charge distribution, we can put in charge over total length. And so we got Q over A dy. Our cosine theta, let's take a look at our triangle. If this is theta, then so is this angle over here. And so the cosine of that angle is equal to x over the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is equal to y squared plus x squared square root. It's a right triangle. So we can make these substitutions. And what we're left with is E sub x is the integral of k q over a dy x, and we have an r cubed now, and I will write it over here. 
the integral of k q over a x dy over y squared plus x squared to the three halves. And now we're integrating over y, and on our charge distribution, uh, the y variable goes from zero to a. Those are our limits of integration. So this integral, first let me get all the constants out of there. I've got a k and a q. x is a constant here, right? That's our position on the x-axis where we're finding the electric field. And we've got the integral from 0 to a of dy over y squared plus x squared to the 3 halves. And what I do is look this up in an integral table. So uh, most physics textbooks, if you go to the appendix, check out the appendix in the book. Make sure you, you're lugging that big book around. Make sure uh, you're using every, all the information that's there. So I can look this up in the back of the book. And what I get is that this integral becomes 1 over x squared. 1 y over y squared plus x squared square root. All evaluated from 0 to a. And then, of course, I still have my constants out in front here. And I can evaluate this, and I end up with kq over x, 1 over a squared plus x squared square root. So that's the x component of my electric field. We can do the same thing now for the y component. Only the y component is going to be, there's going to be a sine theta in here. And we're going to integrate. Oops, this is D. There we go. <clears throat> and we'll make the substitutions again. Our dQ is a charge density times dy. In this case, the charge density is the total charge over the total length because it's uniform charge distribution. It doesn't have to be a uniform charge distribution. If it's not uniform, you plug in the formula for the charge distribution. Maybe it's a function of y. Maybe that lambda equals some constant times y. You just plug that in here. Sine theta. Let's take a quick look. <clears throat> this is theta. Sine theta is y over r. And of course, r is y squared plus x squared square root. <clears throat> so what does our integral become? k q over a dy y over r cubed. Of course, we have an integral here. I'm going to bring my constants out in front. And the integral is from 0 to a. This integral is also in the back of the book. It's uh, a little more complicated than the previous one. We end up with uh, our constants. And then this integral becomes negative 1 over y squared plus x squared square root evaluated from 0 to a.
and that's our y component. So we put the two together and we end up with the x component and the y component of the electric field.